Chief Executive John Lee announces major reform for District Council. Hong Kong's economy is back on positive growth. Inland Revenue says it will collect more tax this year after a drop last year. Good evening and welcome to TVB News. The government has announced major changes for the city's district council, which are intended to depoliticize the council. Under the plan, directly elected seats will be reduced to only 20% of the council, while a vetting system will be introduced. The Executive Council has approved a proposal for major changes to district administration. When the District Council or the DC changes term at the end of the year, there will be 470 seats, down from the current 479. Some 179 seats will be appointed by the Chief Executive, while 176 will be elected among district committees. 27 rural committee seats will remain. Directly elected seats, which used to make up 90% of the DC, will be reduced to 88 seats. The 452 constituencies have been restructured and reduced to 44 constituencies, each with two seats. It is the black violence, it is the attempt to uh, make Hong Kong independent and uh, the attempt to cause disaster to Hong Kong society as a whole that we need to prevent. We live through that. Uh, don't forget it. The threshold for serving the DC has also been changed. Candidates must garner nominations from three committee members from each of the three district committees, as well as nominations from 50 voters in the constituency. The nomination will then be confirmed by a newly set up steering committee, which will be chaired by the Chief Secretary for Administration. Councils will no longer elect the chairman among members, but instead, the district officers of each constituency will chair the DC. This particular practice was last implemented in 1982. Addressing concerns that the changes make the DC go backwards, the CE defended the move. It will ensure that it will, the District Council will operate as the basic law, Article 97, requires. That is, uh, to be consulted on issues that the government wants uh, to be consulted on, and also to provide uh, services in regard to uh, culture, um, recreation, etc. It will also reflect um, the principle of administration led. Governance. The city's first district council was established in 1982, with one third of the seats being government officials and the rest belonging to voted or appointed members. The DC then went through several revamps and all appointed seats were scrapped in 2016. Political parties have different views about the reform. The DO as chairman of the council, uh, he, will, he or she will overlook the administration and decision. Uh, the power is returned to the administrators, the government, uh, to look after the livelihood uh, matters. The council should be a body to uh, recommend the government how to do better. Uh, it's, a, it's a body to, to, to actually watch how the government uh, perform in the district. But nowadays, uh, with the new proposal, uh, it seems that it is the government watching the district council how they perform. Lowe added the Democratic Party will discuss whether or not to take part in D.C. elections in the future. Hong Kong's economy expanded 2.7 per cent in the first three months of this year, the first quarterly growth after four consecutive quarters of contraction. Chief Executive John Lee is confident the second quarter will be even better. Mo sang reports. In February, the city's border with the mainland fully reopened. To promote tourism and attract international tourists, not only did the Hong Kong government let delegations to visit overseas countries, it also launched the Hong Kong Goodies Project, giving out over a million welcome consumption vouchers to visitors. In March, authorities scrapped all social distancing measures, including the mask-wearing mandate ending the pandemic era. Speaking to the press before today's executive council meeting, Chief Executive John Lee said the SAR had recorded a 2.7 per cent GDP growth in the first three months of this year, reversing contractions in the previous four quarters. 
The main contributor to the growth is the private consumption, with 12.5% increase year on year. Li believes the economy will perform better in the next quarter. While exports are still fell, but then as uh, the main economy picks up and uh, with enhance in our aviation capacity, I believe in the second quarter of this year, our economy will be much better. Last weekend, the Happy Hong Kong campaign was launched with Cinema Day and a gourmet food market in Wan Chai. Both activities received strong support. 222,000 residents visited the cinemas, whereas 44,000 people went to the food market. Happy Hong Kong has brought joy to Hong Kong. I'm pleased to see the smiles of Hong Kong people and I am pleased to see how our uh, economy and also our consumption has increased. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund predicts the economic growth in Asia-Pacific region will accelerate from 3.8% to 4.6% this year. The IMF believes the region will contribute to over 60% of global economic growth this year. Bimus Nai, TVB News. The Inland Revenue Department announced the government collected over $360 billion in taxes last year. That's $18.3 billion less than the year before. The drop was due to factors including a largely quiet property market, but the department expects it will collect more taxes this year. Timothy Lee reports. The time has come for the annual tax season. Starting today, the Inland Revenue Department will send out around 2.4 million tax returns for individuals, including 1.8 million physical and 600,000 digital forms. Commissioner of Inland Revenue Tom Tai Pang said taxpayers can claim deductions for paying domestic rent at a $100,000 limit per year of assessment. The department said physical tax returns must be filed by the 2nd of June, within a month's time, while digital returns must be filed by the 3rd of July. Meanwhile, the Inland Revenue Department collected about $360 billion in tax last year. That's an $18.3 billion decrease from the year before. Profit tax accounted for more than $174 billion, while salaries tax accounted for $79.5 billion. Both saw increases. But stamp duties collected dropped to $70 billion, a 30 percent decrease mainly due to a quiet property market. The department expects this year's tax collection will reach $379 billion, along with the rise of stamp duties to $85 billion. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Andrew Khan has become the new head of the National Security Department of the Police Force following the retirement of Deputy Commissioner Edwin L. Lau. Khan joined the police force in 1991 and has served in many command posts. Chief Executive John Lee said Khan has a high awareness of national security, praising the officer for his professionalism and commitment to serve the public. Overseas, U.S. President Joe Biden met Philippines leader Ferdinand Marcos Jr. for talks at the White House on Monday. This as the Philippine president embarks on a four-day official visit to the United States. The two presidents outlined plans to boost security cooperation amid a tense geopolitical situation globally and in the Indo-Pacific. Beijing had earlier urged Washington to stop stirring up tensions among regional countries using the South China Sea issue. Daniel Rao reports. Monday's Oval Office meeting is the latest high-level diplomacy with Asia-Pacific leaders by U.S. President Joe Biden. Marcos Jr.'s official visit to Washington is the first by a Philippine president in over a decade. Biden outlined his administration's commitment to the security of the Philippines. The United States also remains ironclad in our, remains ironclad in our commitment to the defense of the Philippines, including the South China Sea, and we're going to continue to support the Philippines' military modernization goals. We need to find uh, many ways to uh, strengthen our alliances and our partnerships uh, in the face of the, the new economy that we are facing post-pandemic. Um, beyond that, there, is, there are also the uh, uh, issues, geopolitical issues, that have made the region where the Philippines is 
uh, possibly, arguably, the most uh, complicated geopolitical situation in, in the world right now. Following the meeting, the White House announced the transfer of three C-130 aircraft and two coastal patrol vessels to the Philippines. The two countries also said they adopted defense guidelines aimed at deepening cooperation and interoperability between their militaries across land, sea, air, space and cyberspace. Marcos Jr.'s visit to Washington comes after the U.S. and the Philippines completed their largest war drills ever last week and as tensions between Manila and Beijing rise in the South China Sea. An incident in the South China Sea last Friday saw a Chinese Coast Guard ship block a Philippine patrol vessel steaming into the second Thomas Shoal. Beijing's foreign ministry said the Philippine ship intruded into the waters of the reef. The ministry also defended the Chinese Coast Guard's response as professional and with restraint. Beijing has also expressed concern about the increasing American military presence in the Philippines. Dan Roll, TVB News. U.S. forces have conducted an exercise which simulated defending Taiwan against a mainland invasion, according to a report. U.S. Special Operations Command in their annual capabilities exercises used a scenario involving Taiwan for the first time. According to a report in Military.com, General Jonathan Braga said the People's Republic of China is their true pacing challenge out there. He said ultimately what they are trying to do is prevent World War III. In Ukraine, Russian troops have been pushed out of some parts of the battlefield city of Bakhmut amid fierce fighting, according to the Ukrainian military. This as the White House estimates that Russia's military has suffered 100,000 casualties, including 20,000 deaths in the past five months fighting against Ukraine. Tracy Furness has more. We should be issued, Ukrainian Colonel General Alexandra Seresky said Monday that the situation in Bakhmut is difficult, but at the same time, in some parts of the city, the enemy was counterattacked by Ukrainian units and left some positions. The 10 month battle for the eastern Ukraine city of Bakhmut has become the epicenter of hostilities between Russia and Ukraine that has seen little movement in the front lines since late 2022, leaving both sides looking for a breakthrough. The head of the Wagner private militia, Yevgeny Prigozhin, renewed his appeal to Russia's defense ministry to increase ammunition shipments to his fighters who are trying to seize Bakhmut. He says he needs at least 300 tons of artillery shells a day for an assault on the city, but he's given no more than a third of that. The White House said Monday that the battle for Bakhmut has come at a high cost. Just since December, we estimate that Russia has suffered more than 100,000 casualties, including over 20,000 killed in action, nearly half of whom were Wagner soldiers, the majority of whom were Russian convicts that were thrown into com combat in Bakhmut without sufficient combat uh, or uh, combat training, uh, combat leadership, uh, or, or any sense of organizational command and control. Meanwhile, Russia has accused Ukraine of shelling a village in the Russian Bryansk region that borders Ukraine early Tuesday. There were no casualties, but a freight train was derailed. Tracy Furness, TVB News. Still ahead on tonight's news. Labor Day protests in France turn violent. Sandstorm in the US caused fatal car crashes. And survey finds most Hong Kong men are overweight. Welcome back to TVB News. Dozens of police were injured and hundreds of violent protesters were arrested as three quarters of a million people took part in marches across France on Labor Day. David Garrett had more sport. A police officer is hit by a petrol bomb. Colleagues rush to help the injured officer and are also caught up in the flames. Officials said one member of the force was badly injured in the May Day riots. Overall, more than 100 police were wounded. Some three quarters of a million protesters took to the streets across France. Large crowds gathered in this Paris park as thick smoke blows across the trees. 
A bicycle station was set on fire. Construction sites were also targeted. Some fires were relit after firefighters had extinguished them as protests lasted into the night. Around various cities across the nation, similar scenes were repeated. Alarms wail, crowds yell and smoke fills the sky as cars are set ablaze in Nantes. France has seen this many times in recent weeks. People are angry that President Emmanuel Macron has raised the pension age to 64. They think he is aloof and doesn't care about the rise in the cost of living. A central bridge becomes a battleground in Lyon. It is a city which has seen some of the worst violence. Riot police again come under bombardment. Fireworks and bottles are hurled at them. Once again, a car is engulfed in flames. This business was targeted. It has been ransacked and also set alight. Most protests, though, were peaceful. Union members were joined by those who opposed the president's reforms. The message was clear, chanted loud, Macron out. This nurse says, we will continue to protest. All that we want is for him to give up. Despite the Interior Ministry claiming the numbers of demonstrators are diminishing, these people claim the fight is far from over. This factory worker says Macron has to stay on for four more years. We will go on. No problem. We will win. I'm convinced. There is a mountain to climb if they're to turn the pension policy on its head, but they believe they can slowly reverse history. David Garrett, TVB News. In the U.S. state of Illinois, a windstorm kicked up clouds of blinding dust off farm fields, causing vehicle crashes that killed at least six people. This report from NBC News. Tonight, this highway dust storm turning deadly in Illinois. State police say dozens of vehicles crashed along a major highway south of the state capitol this morning. The cause of the crash is due to excessive winds blowing dirt from farm fields across the highway, leading to zero visibility. At least six people killed, with over 30 taken to the hospital and two semi-trailers catching fire, according to officials. At this time, our numbers that we have are approximately 20 commercial motor vehicles and 40 to 60 passenger cars involved in the crash. That brutal weather, roughly a three-hour drive south of Davenport, Iowa, in a region where some streets are better suited for boats than cars. In Buffalo, Iowa, Janine Buckley says thanks to those sandbags, inside, her house is dry. You still have power, mm -hmm. heat, every, everything. It's, I mean, if you were inside, you'd have no idea. Yeah, no. If I had the curtains closed, I'd never know. Others around the city of Davenport are not so lucky. As the Midwest waits to dry out, parts of the southeast are cleaning up from tornadoes. The National Weather Service says a twister with roughly 145 mile per hour winds ripped through Virginia Beach Sunday after a weaker tornado hit near Palm Beach, Florida Saturday, tossing around cars. It's loud, it's scary, and lightning everywhere. Meanwhile, Davenport waiting for word the Mississippi is done rising for now. A familiar problem that some feel is a fair price for life on the river. The latest population health survey by the Department of Health has found more than half of all Hong Kongers are either obese or overweight. Timothy Lee tells us more. Hong Kong, like many other developed cities, is struggling with an obesity problem. The Center for Health Protection conducted its third population health survey over the past two years, surveying over 16,000 residents between the ages of 15 and 84. The survey found that over 50% of Hong Kongers are either overweight or obese, which is a significant increase from the previous survey. Males also numbered higher in the overweight category than women, with those aged between 45 and 54 having the highest rate of obesity. More than half of the people surveyed reported having high cholesterol, which was a 2.4% increase from the last survey. Around 70% of the surveyed said they did not know they had high cholesterol until they had a body check. Those suffering from high blood sugar and diabetes accounted for 8.5% of the population, while residents with high blood pressure make up as much as 30%. Meanwhile, almost 15% of those aged 30 to 74 are at risk of contracting cardiovascular diseases over the next 10 years, with those aged between 65 and 74 most risky. We think that um, the obesity and the overweight is uh, more than 50%. Therefore, it's quite common. Therefore, I, 
I can say that the situation is uh, quite serious. Uh, when we compare to the past, it's an uh, increase in the proportion, a uh, percentage of the local people becoming more uh, obese and uh, overweight. I think that is the due to uh, unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, it's probably due to that uh, because obesity and the overweight is the energy gain <laughs> and, uh, over the period of time or the years. And uh, the energy expenditure is basically due to the physical activity. The CHP added that besides exercise, residents need to increase their intake of fruits and vegetables in order to get the necessary fiber. Dr. Ho suggests that residents aged 18 or above should have their blood pressure tested at least once every two years, while those aged 45 or above should perform a blood glucose test at least once every three years. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Over the past three days, around 450,000 mainlanders had visited Hong Kong. However, long queues formed outside ticket booths as most did not have octopus carts. Chief Executive John Lee will discuss this with the business sector in the hope of improving the situation. On the fourth day of the Golden Week, more tourists arrived in Causeway Bay armed with suitcases. Some say the service has improved compared to before the pandemic. Others found getting around the city tricky. They encountered a language barrier, having to repeat themselves a few times in Mandarin. It's estimated that over 600,000 mainlanders will visit the city over the Labor Day break. And that's the news. Thanks for watching.